Angeles Dodgers. Gary Sheffield against Shane Reynolds, who's struggled of late, and there it goes. It's 34th on the year, and just like that, 1-0 L.A. Larry Durker's team, Tim, having problems on defense. Right, huge game tonight for the Astros, and they basically played very poorly tonight. Here we see Mark Grzelanek. He singles to center here, and Carl Everett bobbles it. And then, instead of keeping the ball down, he shouldn't even have thrown it to third. He makes a wild throw to third. And now, instead of first and second, there's runners at second and third. Grzelanek moved up. And Gary Sheffield, the batter, base hit. Young scores. Carl Everett's throw. Developing situation at the plate. Grzelanek is safe. 3-0 L.A. Then after Jeff Bagwell walked, more mistakes by Houston. Right, now Carl Everett is having one of the better years in the National League. He's been tremendous, but he's not good here. Little looper into left field. Now, understand the ball is right in front of Carl Everett here, but Jeff Bagwell does not go to third on this play, but Carl Everett goes to second. He can see the play in front of him. He can see the ball in front of him. He can see Bagwell in front of him, but he runs up his back. Bagwell gets tagged out, and the Astros run themselves out of an inning here. Carl Everett's had a breakout year, but he did not have a good Jack McKeon, his team has the best road record in the NL. Greg Vaughn in the last five Septembers has 14 homers. That's his 15th homer this September. Reds up 3-0. Barry Larkin, one of the best defensive players in the game. Right, and the Reds have the best middle infield defense in the National League. Barry Larkin's not going to win a gold glove because of Ray Ordonez, but he makes a terrific play here. Pokey Reese, who better win a gold glove, makes the out here. Bottom of the eighth, we're tied at three. Alex Ochoa with two on. Strikes out, Jeremy Burnitz runs towards second. And Burnitz gets caught in a rundown. And eventually gets tagged out. So the Brewers run themselves out of that inning. Top of the 10th, we're still tied. Two on for Eddie Tobinze. Fly ball, Marquise Grissom makes the catch. Bottom 10, we're still tied. Two on for Belliard. Runners at the corners. And Ron Belliard. Base hit to win it for Milwaukee as the Brewers beat the Reds 4-3 in 10. The Brewers' bullpen didn't allow a run in six innings despite walking 10 batters. And for the Brewers, Jeff Cirillo drove in three, run, three runs. So the Reds go down. But Denny Nagel acquired from Atlanta. He missed the early part of the season with arm trouble against Jason Schmidt. hoo Solo home run is 39th of the year. And it's 2-0 in favor of New York. It's a game they have to have. Top eight, we're tied at two with John Franco on the hill. And the bases are loaded here. It's 2-2. Two two. Franco's already given up the tie and run here. And he's in big trouble because he's got 3-0 and oh on Adrian Brown here. Strike one here. And strike two is a strike. This is at the bottom of the kneecap. That's as low as it gets. So now it's 3-2, bases loaded. And then Mark Hirschbeck, who's a very good umpire, by the way, calls this a strike. I can't believe he called that a strike. Bottom 11, still tied at two. Robin Ventura, he homered earlier here. Wins the game with a base hit. Sean Dunstan scores the winning run. And the Mets very much alive as they win 3-2 in 11. Just the Mets' second win in their last 10. But they still have a heartbeat. Ventura is a career 369 hitter with 145 RBIs. And one on Sosa, swing and a miss. Mark Thompson struck him out. No score. Right, here we are in the bottom of the first two has John Lieber against Mark McGuire going for number 64 on his 36th birthday. Ball is away from him. I don't think Mac liked that swing too much. And here's Mac later. He hits his, he's hit some home runs the opposite field this year. This looked like another one, but Sammy catches it just short of the track. Top of the seventh is 3-2 Chicago. Sosa at the plate. High pop fly and not deep enough. So Sosa flies out there. Bottom nine, two outs, nobody on. McGuire's last chance. Off of John Lieber's glove in a center field for a base hit. Not enough, though. Cubs win at 3-2. A seven hitter for Lieber, his second straight complete game. McGuire's up three zip. Brett Saberhagen to Albert Bell. Damon Buford going back. Damon Buford, who? Oh, Buford robs him of the home run. Watch it again. Buford back to the track, back to the wall, and a great catch as Boston wins it 6-2. to two. Jose Offerman walked twice, scored twice, drove in two, and had two hits. Saberhagen pitches two innings, the team wanting to rest him for game two of the first 89 games that year. Manny Ramirez has had a lot to do with all the runs being scored. His 44th home run of the year. He's now got 165 RBIs. 
Cleveland went up, but Toronto wins it by the score of eight to six. Billy Koch is 30. Rojo to Tino Martinez. Three run shot for Tino, number 38 on the year, and the Yanks are up by the score of seven to three. And here's Daryl Strawberry on the way here. You know, Strawberry's been up and down obviously all year, but he's still got that really quick bat, which we'll see again here. And nobody hits him quite as high as he does. This one hits the catwalk, of course. And they're gonna need Strawberry during the playoffs because there's some people who think you can throw fastballs by a, by a good number of these Yankees, but I don't know if you fourth inning here and strikes out Preston Wilson with that beautiful little slider that he runs away from him. And here, same thing, he runs it away here. And beautiful paint in the outside corner. This is John Smoltz at his best. 11 strikeouts, one walk in the right. And you're right, the arm isn't what it used to be, but he's still pitching well. Bottom four, Ryan Klesko. There it goes, his 21st of the year. And the Braves go on to win 4-1. to one. So an excellent tune-up for Smoltz. Strikes out the 11. That's a season high for him in seven innings of work. Atlanta's won 10 out of 11, and John Rocker pitched the ninth for his 38th save. Now, after playing their last game at Candlestick Park, Kurt Manwaring grounds to J.T. Snow, toss to first. Russ Ortiz bails him out, dives and tags a bag at first. Watch it again, Ortiz, with a spectacular play there. And Ortiz got the win. It's 18th of the year as the Giants win at 9-4. Jay Canizero drove in a career high of four runs. J.T. Snow, a homer and three RBI. Two-run home run, and the Expos go on to win by the score of 7-4. to four. So Guerrero, a homer and three RBIs, is 39 homers and 124 RBIs, both new team records for a season. 4-1 is Tony Gwynn, deep to right, 10th of the year, two-run shot. Padres up at this point by the score of 6-1. to one. And that's where we are right now, 6-1 San Diego in the bottom of the ninth. That's his 16th home run of the year, and a grand slam. The White Sox go on to beat Minnesota by the score of 9-8 as the Twins lose their season-high seventh straight game. Brooke Fordyce for Chicago drove in four runs. How about the Tigers and the Royals? Bottom three, Jermaine Dye at the plate. A suicide squeeze. Frank Catalanato can't make the play. Great bunt there, run scores, and the Royals go on to win by the score of nine to five. Die drove in three runs. Royals snapped the Tigers six to nine. Kevin Apier on the hill, ring him up, sit him down. Later in the fourth, it's Griffey, and he walks. Now, to the fifth, Jason Jombie at the plate for Oakland. And Jason Jombie with Christensen on second, drills it to right field. Here comes Christensen to score. That makes it 3-1 in favor of Oakland. And then Eric Chavez, the rookie, back from injury, walks with the bases loaded. And that forces in another run. That makes it 4-1 in favor of Oakland. And that's where we stand right now. Before the game, Oakland catcher Mike McFarland said he will retire after the season. McFarland has been a major leaguer since 19. Welcome back. The hunt for a Reds October came up empty today. Nothing went right for the Red Legs, and Cincinnati now needs help to clinch a playoff spot. Let's go to the ballpark, and the Reds were up 1-0 in the third, and that's when the wheels came off for Juan Guzman. Marquise Grissom singles, two-run score for a 2-1 to one lead. And then Jeff Cirillo singles, two more across the plate. Guzman's out. Reyes gives up two more hits. Then Stan Belinda can't field this hot shot. And it's 7-1 after three. Signs of hope in the fourth. Dimitri Young unloads a blast to center. A three-run shot, 7-4 to four Brewers. But the bullpen unraveled again. Jenkins doubles in Burnett's. They add one more, 9-4 after four. The last Reds threat in the eighth. Two on and two out. Mark Sweeney grounds out to short, and the Reds fall 10-6. Provided the solo homer in the sixth, and that's all that they needed. Jose Lima and Billy Wagner threw a nine hit shutout. Houston owns a one game lead, three to nothing. The Pirates didn't help the Reds. Robin Ventura hits a shot to right field. It's one bounce, a ground rule double. It scores all the road, and that's all the Mets needed. Tied with the Reds with a. Yesterday at Bush on a 3-0 pitch, Big Mac takes Andrew Lorraine into Quicheland. His 64th of the year, 521 in career, tying Willie McCovey and Ted Williams on the all-time list. But the Cubs win. Sosa stuck on 62. And a win by the Reds and Mets would ensure at the very least one more game for each. We begin in Milwaukee late in the evening. The rain would fall hard at times. Weather being updated on the scoreboard for the fans and Jack McKeon passing the time with a good gar. After a five-hour, 45-minute rain delay, we played ball. 
Sean Casey at the bat. Pokey Reese comes in, 2 nothing Reds in the third. Former Brewer Greg Vaughn as in gone. Off Cal Eldred, 45th on the year for Vaughn. Three-run bomb, Reds up 5 nothing. Bottom four, one on for Jeff Cirillo against Pete Harnish. Oh. Pokey Reese, great grab and gets the force. Reds led 5 nothing after four. Bottom five, two on for Dave Nilsson. With the Reds up, the grounder, Reese, double play. Pete Harnish battling the cold, a hurt shoulder, and the Reds' playoff hopes. Trying to get the win. Little Tapper is short. Bottom nine with two on. Kevin Barker. Larkin gets Barker first, and the Reds can celebrate. Not completely celebrate. 7-1 the final. The Reds picking up the victory. Pete Harnish pitched five and two-thirds shutout innings to tie a career high with his 16th win. After the game, Greg Vaughn talked about the Reds' wait-and-see attitude. The backs were against the wall, so we had to come out here and fight like there was no tomorrow because there, if we didn't win, we were all going home. So uh, the fellas responded well, and we lived for another day. The Reds needed to win because the Mets got to win. Shades of 73, Mets pinning their hopes on Oral Hershiser. Top of the first, Oral runs into problems. Al Martin at third, Kevin Young with a base knock. Martin's no longer at third. Mets in an early 1-0 hole. Top three, man at first for Al Martin and Martin. To Edgardo Alfonso, the old neighborhood play. Ray Ordonez seems to be off the bag. The relay doesn't appear to be in time. The double play stands. Bottom four, runner third for Daryl Hamilton. Hamilton facing Chris Benson. Benson had a great afternoon. He'd like to have that pitch back. John Olerud will score. Hamilton doubles down the line. We're tied at one. In the ninth, runner at second, Armando Benitez gets Aramis Ramirez, gets out of the inning unscathed, and then the bottom of the ninth, the subtle New York crowd control is apparent. Melvin Mora, base knock with one out. Next batter is Elgardo Alfonso, who could be the Mets MVP this year, and Alfonso goes after a tough pitch. Mora goes to third on the base knock to right. After intentionally walking John Olerud to load the bases, Mike Piazza is waiting. Pirates go to the bullpen and bring in Brad Klontz to face Piazza. Klontz, his first pitch. Melvin Mora comes home to score. The Mets win it 2-1. 50,000 plus Mets fans became Brewer fans. Bobby V's reaction. The Mets winning in the afternoon, having to await the outcome of the Reds Brewers game to find out their fate. So after blowing a four game lead with 12 to play, the Mets assured of a tie. Kevin Brown on the bench. He went with Robinson Chaco. Bottom of the first, he faces Stan Javier, and he walks him. Chaco played in China, played in Japan, and didn't come to play on this day. Walks Jeff Bagwell, then he walks Carl Everett, and then bases are loaded, and Chaco, Harpo, Zeppo, four walks in a row. He walks Ken Caminetti, one nothing Astros. Bases are still loaded. Next batter, Daryl Ward. Into the gap, Bagwell, Everett, Caminiti, come on down. 4 nothing Astros, three-run double for Ward. 6-1 Astros in the sixth. Mike Hampton on the mound. Hampton. You see the National League Cy Young winner? Just ask Adrian Beltre, the whiff. Seven innings, three hits, eight Ks for Hampton. Top nine, 9-4 nine, Astros, two outs. It's all over except for the applause. Jay Powell against Raul Mondesi. Ball game. Fireworks. Celebration. And the celebration would spill over into the locker room. Champagne dreams, champagne showers. Houston's third straight Central Division title. Hampton pitching on three days rest. Looking for home run number 65, and he got it. Off the guy who gave up number 62 last year, Steve Traxel. Huge home run for McGuire, who leads Sosa by three until the top of the third. Two runners on for semi. Sosa! Home run number 63. This one off of Larry Lubers. So McGuire and Sosa homer on the last day of the season in what might be the last game for Willie McGee. Who waves goodbye to the Bush crowd just in case. The Cardinals win a rain between the Mets and Reds. One team would go on while the other would go home with 96 regular season wins and a parting gift of wondering all winter where that extra win could have come from. The Mets and Reds game 163 from Cincinnati. Ricky led the game off with a single, and Edgardo Alfonso brings everybody home with a monster shot to center. Home run number 27 of the year. Big blast coming early in this ballgame in the third. Runners on second and third, meaning an open base 
And Jack McKeon puts Mike Piazza on it and brings in Denny Nagel on two days rest to face left-hander Robin Ventura, who busts out the walking stick. In comes Alfonso, Mets up 3-0. Bottom of the third, Al Leiter cruising. Sean Casey swinging. Leiter gave up only one hit through three. It'll be tougher after that. Bottom of the fourth, Mets up 3-0. Dimitri Young to Ray Ordonez, who played his 100th straight errorless game. Top of the fifth, Mets up 3-0. Ricky Henderson. Yeah. Bobby V using body English, and you can hear the Met fans already. You were stiff last week, Ricky. Now you're awesome. Bottom of the sixth, Leiter facing Barry Larkin. Larkin. Looking. One hit through six for Leiter, who finished what he started. Two out, two on in the ninth. Edgardo Alfonso snags Young's liner, and that will wrap it up. Bobby V will manage a postseason game for the first time in his career, as the Mets are in the postseason for the first time since 1988. The Mets and Yankees are.